Alright people and welcome to my very first YouTube tutorial video. Today I'm going to show you guys how to create a skateboard deck. Believe it or not, you can do it whether you don't know Photoshop very well or even maybe not at all for some of you. And then for those that do know Photoshop really well, this will be a breeze for you. So first of all, I'm on my website here at skatefreeonline.com or skatefreeskateboards.com and it is not finished, but I have a good start to it. Hopefully I'll be able to sell these decks and shirts and stuff pretty soon. I'm working on it. So anyway, here's a whole bunch of decks that I have designed. I just kind of wanted to show you real quick that I have, in fact, designed a lot of skateboards. Um, and if you, uh, so I'll show you how to do that, and then I'll also show you uh, how to create all these different versions of the same skateboard, so you get lots of variation in color and design. So that's what I'm going to start off showing you guys um, how to do that. Now, uh, what you need to do is get yourself a skateboard template. Uh, the best way to do that I found was to just go on Google and type in skateboard template and you'll find one. Um, now mine has two layers and I did have to edit this. Um, and this will be easy for those that know Photoshop really well. But uh, this is the template that I got. Now I, I believe I still had to edit. I think it had a black outline and crap. I had to get rid of that. Um, but it did come with these nice boxes which are nice for reference not for design. The reason why they're nice is because this shows you exactly where the trucks are going to bolt onto the deck. So you'll know that this part of the skateboard is not going to show the design. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind is to ab above it and below it on both sides here, there's going to be wheels. Um, and so you'll kind of lose some of that design there too. So keep most of your important design on the nose and on the tail and in the center. That's kind of important to know. So then I created a second layer, which is obviously this red layer, and I erased the black box, the, the outline boxes, so I could have a nice clean uh, surface to work on. Okay, so with that said, let's jump right into the design. Okay, so here is a design I did uh, in Illustrator, and I'm going to now place that design on my skateboard deck. So... <clears throat> If you have your photograph, your text, your image, whatever you got, open it up and click on this select tool and then just grab it and you can see it moves around. That's how you know you got it. And just drag it up and then drop it right onto your skateboard template. Now, mine has these uh, white uh, portions of the eyes, the teeth, and the nose. That I should delete, but I'm not going to for the purposes of this uh, tutorial because I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Okay, now that's really tiny. Uh, that's probably not going to work. So if that's the case, then what you need to do is you need to come up here to edit and come down to free transform. Okay, and then you can use, I'm using a Mac, so it's an option click for me, and I drag and the proportion will stay the same on a PC. I'm guessing it's control or command. No, it's not command. It's like control or something. I don't know. You PC people will know that. Um, so I'll let, I guess I'll let you guys figure that part out. But anyway, I'm going to drag it out so it's nice and big, and I want it to actually come off the board to some degree. Um, so, and I don't want it perfectly centered. So I'm just going to drop it there let's say and up at the top here you have these little the circle and then the X or the, the holy hell I'm retarded uh, you have the um, checkbox when you got it where you want it click that checkbox and it drops there now obviously you can see we got a problem because it is overhanging the actual deck top and bottom and again this is I'm gonna show you right real quick um, so over here we have our art layer I'm gonna click that off with the eyeball and you can see it disappears and I'm gonna click the blank red deck off. Now you can see those bounding boxes. Okay, those are where the trucks are gonna go again. So I'm gonna come back over here to layer and I'm gonna turn on my uh, school guy here. And you can see he's gonna get chopped off right there. Now that could be okay and that could be bad. For this, for this tutorial, I'm gonna say it's fine. Uh, but you might not, that's why I have those boxes. You might not want that. Okay, so I just turned, sorry, I just turned this uh, clean layer, I call it my clean because it doesn't, yeah, anyway, you can figure that out. So I have my art layer, my clean deck, and my box, okay? So I have three layers. So how do we, now, well, actually, let's just add some text to this just to kind of, let me minimize this so I don't get too cluttered. Uh, let's add some text here just because you, somebody might want to do that. So over here, we have our text tool. We're just gonna simply click on the text tool. Um, white, probably not white. Let's, I just, sorry, I double clicked on this 
on this white box here, color palette, and it, it'll bring up this uh, color picker. And over here, uh, I just want to pump up my black, but I kind of want it to be a rich black, so I'm going to pump this black up to 100. I'm going to pump the yellow up to 100. I'm going to pump the magenta up to 100. And I'm going to pump the cyan up to 100. Now what that's going to do, hey, you stupid black, there you go. Um, that is going to make a really rich black color, especially when you go to print. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to come, oh, I already have my uh, text tool selected. That's good, right? So I'm just going to click right here, and I'm going to type out Skate Free. Real original. Um, okay. We're just going to say that font is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want anything different. It's absolutely perfect. So I'm going to click this check again. You may or may not have to do that. It just depends on your settings. Um, I do want to make that bigger, um, and it's easy to do with the free transform tool. So I'm going back to edit. I'm going down to free transform. Okay, now I got those little beautiful bounding boxes again, and I'm going to stretch this bad boy out. And I'm going to bring it down here, and I'm actually going to have it hang off the deck also. And I'm going to take it off because I don't quite want it nice and perfectly straight. Maybe I'll even go this way with it. Okay. And I'm just going to drag it up like that and move it down a little bit. So we have just a bit overhang. Now I got it where I want it. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click that box or that check mark. So now you can see we have a little bit hanging off the edge there. We got a lot of the school hanging off. But overall, you know, not too bad. So now we just got to figure out how we're going to crop it. And it's easy as, as pie. I don't know if pie is easy. Most people can't make pie, so it's kind of a stupid thing to say. So I'm going to come back over here to my red um, deck layer. Um, and I highlight that, and you can see it's that one. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come way over here, and I'm coming to this tool called the Magic Wand Tool. And I'm going to click it. If you don't see it, hold, click, hold, and this little flyout will pop and then click on the magic one tool. Okay. Now, um, just click here on your deck, and you're gonna get these what some people call marching ants. You can see now it's it's cut right through. It's like, hey, that's perfect. That's just what I want to do. I wanted to cut that off. Um, that that seems like a good thing. You can see down here also, it's gonna cut the chin off the dude, and it's even gonna trim just a little bit off these letters. Perfect, right? How do we do that? Well, it's quite simple. Right now we have selected this deck and it's selected everything inside here. So if we do any changes, it's gonna make them to this red portion, but we want it to make it to this outside portion so it affects parts like that top of the, the noggin right there. Easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to select and we're actually gonna inverse the selection. So what that did is it took the selection from selecting everything inside here to now selecting everything outside okay seems seems legit right so now what do we do well we're gonna come over here and we're gonna here's our artwork okay right there we select it and you can see I'm gonna turn it on and off so you can see it there it is on and off and now all I want to do is just simply with one finger hit the delete button and let's see what happens there's the delete button bam cropped perfectly beautiful awesome it worked Okay, now we just got one more problem because we got that text. And we got these little E's and a little bit of that K and, you know, we kind of got, we just, or a little bit of that R, sorry, hanging off there. We got some problem. What do we do with that? Well, pretty easy. We're coming back to the layers palette. We're going to our text where we wrote Skate Free. Okay, we got it selected. And now we're going to hit the delete button. Delete. Oh, we got ourselves a problem. What's the problem? Well, it can't be done because the type has not been rasterized. What is rasterization? Don't worry about it. It's just, if you know what it is, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. It's just one more thing you got to learn. Just when you see that, don't worry about it. Come over to the layer that you have your, your text here. See it coming on and off. Make sure it's highlighted. And option click or command or control click, whatever it is on your um, uh, Microsoft and come down to where it says rasterize type. Okay, click it. Uh, guess what? You're done. You did it. Congratulations. You officially rasterized your first font. 
You are a font master now. Okay, so we did it. It's rasterized. Now what? Well, same process. We we still got it highlighted. Okay, that's our scale for you. Now watch the magic. See those little E's? Watch. Delete. Boom. Gone. Cropped. Beautiful. Perfect. Look at that. We have a skateboard deck. Now, because we have stuff selected, let's just deselect just for the sake of, you know, we don't want we don't want any trouble. So we're just going to come to select, deselect. That's just going to simply deselect everything. Now, that's kind of cool. But what are some other options we have? Well, let's add a lighting effect to it just to add a little drama. Okay, so let's let's add it to the background or to the the skateboard deck itself, not the not the artwork. So we're gonna zoom in here um, on the layers, and we're going back to the deck. It's the red part, you know, people. Come on now, follow me. It's the red part here. So you can see you want to click it on and off. That's the red is what we want. Okay. So if you go up here to filter. And then you come down here to render. And then you come here to lighting effects and you click lighting effects, the lighting effect window will open. Huh, that's weird. Now, sometimes this is gonna happen. You're gonna go to that and you're not gonna be able to open up the lighting effects because you have a small problem which is easy to fix and let me show you. If you try to open up that and it won't allow you or it comes up with a box and says you can't do it, don't panic. You're fine. What you want to do is come up here to image, mode, and more than likely you are on CMYK color. And you can't do the lighting effect on CMYK color. But what you can do it on is RGB. So just simply click RGB. Okay, now mine's already RGB, so it's not going to do anything. But another box is going to pop up, a warning box, and it's going to say, do you want to merge layers? Say no, do not merge layers. If you do merge layers, you're not screwed, just I don't recommend it at this point. So don't freak out, you're good. Now, since we have it changed, uh, since we got our color mode now set from CMYK to RGB, now we can apply the lighting effect. So we're going back to filter, we're coming all the way down here to a render, and we're going to lighting effects, effects, effects. And I have, uh, I previously made my own and it's pretty decent. Um, and you can actually create your own and save it as I did here. I just called it perfect for decks. Um, and it, uh, that way I get a pretty consistent lighting. Um, but otherwise, you know, here's some of my settings here. Um, you, these are not gold people. You do not have to stick with these settings. Matter of fact, I'm sure you can make cooler ones than this. Uh, but, you know, I mean, if you want to, you can start with, with some of these and once you kind of get something you like just hit okay if you don't like it you can always undo it it's not a big deal so you hit hit okay and watch the lighting effect take place there we go now we got kind of a cool little effect it, it kind of makes it almost look like the board that the nose and the tail is actually kind of curving a little bit uh, like there's some depth to it cool perfect awesome so if you didn't like it don't worry about it just go up here to edit and undo and you're right back to where you were um, now I want to show you guys one more little thing and it's kind of how to get some variation easily so here's what I usually do and again you don't have to do this I come over to layers and what I'll do is I'll take as a well you know I'm not even gonna do that it's just gonna complicate it so screw that I'm sticking on my um, uh, red layer here my clear one or my my clean deck layer and <clears throat> Sorry, I'm gonna go to image. I'm gonna go to adjust and I'm gonna come down here to hue and saturation Okay, now that's gonna open up and it's gonna give me this box people Okay, now what's kind of cool about this is it allows you to make Dramatic changes very easily. So all you gotta do is come down to this little box right here. That's just color Okay, check that box now, I like to take my saturation and I like to pump that bad boy all the way up. Pump that up to 100. Okay? Now, this slider right here that says hue, use that slider and watch as I just slide it around. Look at the color variations. Ooh, it's so beautiful. And then, of course, you have your light. You can make it 
uh, down here you got, you know, lighter, darker, darker, lighter, in between lighter, medium, and darker. And of course you can drop your saturation if you want. I'll usually leave mine way up. So I'm going to slide this over until we get, I don't know, somewhat of an interesting color. Um, let's go with, uh, oh yeah, well we had a red, so let's go with something kind of strange. Ah, uh, yeah, perfect, beautiful, awesome. I'm going to hit OK. Now you can see I got a different version. And since we already did the lighting effect, this is what's kind of nice in Photoshop, we already went to filter, render, um, and did the lighting effect. But we don't have to worry about that because we already got it figured out, right? So look what Photoshop does. It says, hey, I remember what you did. I'm pretty smart. So you can just click that and let it do its magic. And voila. There you go. Now you have an alternative version. And now you can, you can just do that all you want. You can get crazy with it. And you can invert colors. Let me show you how to do that real quick for those that don't know how to do it. I'm going to, again, go to Edit and Undo Lighting Effect. Okay. So let's say you want to do something that affects the entire image. Easy, here's, here's an easy way to do it. Come to your layers palette, click the um, top layer and the bottom layer, highlight them all. Um, probably, probably option, it's option click for uh, Mac again and probably command, I'm not sure. And, and then right click on it, I guess, maybe is what it is for a PC. I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, and then down here, sorry, I can't zoom any further. There we go. Go to merge layers, and then it's going to merge them. It's going to take all those layers and create one layer. Now that's good and bad. That's good because now, you know, everything's pretty much concrete, but I can't just grab, you know, like this font. Oh, nope. See, can't just do that. It's all one now. It's, it's all one. But it allows you to do some things that are, you know, makes things some things easier. So now let's go back to image. Let's go to adjust. And let's go down here to invert and see what happens. Invert. So we click the invert. Bam! Woohoo! That's strange. But you can see how you can totally mess with stuff. Again, now we can screw some more. Let's go image. Whoa, really zoomed in there. Image, adjust, hue, and saturation. Again. Uh, just make sure that you click on this colorized box and I'm going to pump up my saturation and then I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see it and I'm going to move this hue point around you can see all this weird funky stuff that is happening and anyway that's that's a good way to really uh, change up and get a lot of variation and quickly now there's much more sophisticated ways to do this there's uh, for people that really know Photoshop they can come up with some you know more sophisticated stuff but if you're this is just a good way to get you started so go ahead and follow those steps guys go ahead and re don't feel don't feel bad if you got to rewind it and go through slowly that's all right believe me if you're new to photoshop it is not something you just pick up and run with you know people spend i've been using photoshop for years and i'm still learning stuff um and i use it a lot so Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, hopefully I'll make some more if you guys like it. And if you got any suggestions, uh, let me know, and I'll do some tutorials on that. And also, if you come up with some cool skateboard designs, we'll see them. We'll see them, people. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching, ya boy.